All right, a tight arc and the torch angle at as close to 90 degrees as you can get it. And then also you kind of stab in the wire in the puddle. You're not sneaking up on it. Those are the three main things. Here's what I mean by tight arc. That's tighter than you would ever have it using AC on aluminum. And the travel speed is a whole lot quicker. And the penetration, as you see right there, way deeper. Penetration is almost as, as deep or deeper as the weld is wide. We'll contrast that with an, one done on alternating current, about the same amperage, same electrode, but using argon and alternating current. The puddle is way cleaner, a lot easier to see. Things look a lot better in the weld. The final weld is going to look better, but it's barely, barely enough for that electrode to handle. This is a 332nd, 2.4 millimeter electrode, and it's quivering and bawling. It's That's all the amperage it can handle is around 210 amps at least on the uh, current AC balance setting. But puddle looks nice. It's going to leave that stack of dimes look, but we'll compare the difference in penetration, and we get very different results in penetration. So that's a very shallow penetration weld. Didn't quite get down into the very root of the joint either. Here's a good example of where a, a small aluminum weld would be required, and it's not that easy to get a small fillet weld on a thick piece of aluminum like this but it could be called out for on a drawing because of the hole right up next there and you need to uh, get clearance. So to get the weld started sometimes you have to stab it and kind of pierce through the oxide film. Once you get the puddle joined together though, things don't look the same but they go along pretty well and you're just moving along at a pretty good clip, really really tight arc and kind of like stabbing the, the wire into the puddle, not giving it a chance to ball up and oxidize. And this is after wire brushing but decent looking weld and it's penetrated really nicely. It does have a little pore there. That, that actually, so you can have that on AC or on, or on DC, but the, the penetration of that weld is way more than you would get on, on AC. Let's look at this little example where there's a single chamfer here. Not very deep, only about an eighth of an inch deep. And a way to get good penetration down into the root of that joint if you needed to. Again, DCEN straight helium. And let's look at a cross section of that now here in just a second. See how deeply that penetrated? About 250 thousandths. Way deeper than you can usually get with, with AC. Let's just look now again at, at another, another run here. Again, 90 degree or as close to 90 degree torch angle as you can get. Really, really tight arc. And you want to you wanna stab the rod in there to pierce through the oxide scum that's, that's on the top of the puddle to get the puddle started and then just motor on. Helium just carries a lot more arc energy than, than straight argon does. And therefore, while argon, pretty much, pretty much what you see happening at the leading edge of the puddle is what's happening. With helium, it seems like under the arc, there's a lot more going on. It's really pushing heat down into the metal. Now, something else that Roy mentioned that he does a lot is a first pass using DC. Of course, it's a little sooty. But after it's cleaned off nice with a wire brush or a wire wheel, that's a perfect perfect scenario to come across now with an AC pass for cosmetics. Then you got your penetration and the aesthetics in one, and plus the piece is then preheated once the DC pass is put in there. Another great example of DC application is a pit, a ding, or in a mold of some kind. This was done intentionally with a corner of a chisel, but just you can puddle the, the thing like that almost immediately and just that one little dab of filler wire, no preheat, no pitting from the AC action or anything like that, and you get nice deep penetration and it cleans off really nicely and you don't affect the temper of the aluminum nearly as much. One really good application for using DC electrode negative um, with helium, on, you know, TIG welding aluminum, is for mold repair. Uh, it doesn't really have to be a mold because there are a lot of things that are like injection molds. They have intricate machining and a lot of time and labor is invested in them and now they have a ding from uh, somebody being careless with a ball peen hammer or a, uh, you know, use a chisel to separate two halves of a mold and, and you have to build up this little area because it's a $30,000 mold, you know, or if you can fix it, it's worth the effort. And a, a pretty good example of that is this part right here. It's got a lot of intricate machining that's been done on it some o-ring type sealing grooves and some ports and holes and everything and and by the time this part is to this stage there's a lot of time and money invested in it. material labor 
and, 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 and who knows what. And not to mention just the deadline being met. This is the type of stuff, not aluminum necessarily, but a lot of stainless and, and stuff that I've done repair on for machinists. And uh, you know, you make, you make a good friend out of a machinist if you can repair something like this. And you can actually build a business by learning how to repair things that have been mismachined and injection molds that have been that have been dinged somehow or another because they're so expensive and there's money involved and so there's money to be made. You always need to have the metal as clean as possible when you're especially when you're using DCEN so a good acetone wipe prior to welding really helps. Now we're going to check this before and after using a square here and welding down this this uh, rail here where it's it's uh, a corner and it's I don't know about three-eighths of an inch thick on the thin part if, if you weren't careful using AC here and putting a big weld, you could easily draw that. You could bow it in and draw it over. But with DC, being able to pick up the travel speed, get the heat started, not have to wait on things to heat up, maintains flatness both ways. Now, I'm not sure exactly what this part is or what the application was. We just chose it because it, we got it out of a scrap bin had permission to get it and it's very similar in the configuration to a lot of injection molds and, and parts that I have done and actually made quite a secondary income repairing parts like this over the years. All right, well, out of time for this week. As always, thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet and visit the store at weldmonger.com. See you next time.